everybody. Um, we are discussing today um, in our business live class, uh, we are discussing the employment contract. So we will talk a little bit about the terms of the employment contract um, and how it's all going to go down is that I'm going to write all in comments um, in our live class um, the terms in English that we will discuss and also I will post some sentences in Romanian that I will ask you later even today or um, in the following days to translate into English using of course the, um, the expressions that we are discussing today. So we will start. And the first thing we are going to discuss today is of course employment contract. You can also say labor contract or work con contract. So I'm going to write all these in the comments. Uh, pay attention to how you spell the labor. Um, in British English is spelled L-A-B-O-U-R and in American English without U. And there are other words, of course, that in British English are spelled O-U instead of just O, um, like um, neighbor, behavior. So pay attention to, um, uh, to the spelling for wherever you want to go. If you want to go to USA or you are talking to someone or writing to someone from the USA or someone from UK. Okay, um, now the next thing is I'm going to give you now the sentence. It's a very easy sentence that you can very easily uh, translate. Um, but I would ask you to pay very close attention to the tense in English that you're going to use um, because it is not specified in the sentence when the um, contract has been signed. So I don't have a time expression, therefore pay attention to the tense. Of course, for contractul de muncă, you can use employment contract or labor contract or work contract. All three of them are right. Now, when we talk about a contract, um, whether it's a, a labor contract or a collaboration contract or services contract, it really doesn't matter. You talk about the parties involved. Um, in a labor contract or an employment contract, the two parties are employer and employee. And I will write them. Of course, the employer is the company um, that has different employees or multiple employees and employees are the people working there and um, who get paid for their services or for, um, for their work. And of course, the employer has to pay for someone's work. And um, the contract and the employee um, will receive or will sign an employment contract um, for a certain period of time or for an indefinite period of time. So whenever you sign a contract, you have to know very well if you sign an indefinite period contract or if you sign a definite period contract. And I will write this. Of course, if it's a definite period contract, you have to know the beginning and the ending of this period. And if it's indefinite, um, it'll only specify the beginning date. Um, we will also talk about the beginning date a little bit later. And I will give you now um, a sentence um, for both these terms, the parties and the period of the contract. Mm 
Ok, the sentence is angajatorul și angajatul au semnat un contract pe perioadă nedeterminată. Ok, you can translate that. Also pay attention to the tense. Another part of um, an employment contract is the probation or the probation period. A probation period is the um, perioada de probă. And the sentence is a very, very easy sentence. Um, it's also very easy to translate because it's in present simple. Perioada de probă este de trei luni. And we are talking about present simple because um, this is something that is generally valid and it's always true. So you wouldn't really use um, another tense if you are not talking about a specific contract um, that you know um, happened in the past. Um, or if you're talking about this probation period um, of a certain contract in the past, so the probation period has already ended, um, therefore you would not met, you would not use present simple because um, it doesn't fit. Or if the probation period is still ongoing, which tense would you use for that? You can write in comments. Um, the probation period is um, very important in a labor contract. Um, well, this is like a side note, um, because you know that during the probation period, uh, both the employer and the employee can terminate the collaboration without giving any reason with or without um, specifying very well why this would happen. Um, so you have to be very careful during the probation period if you actually want to work there as an employee or if uh, the companies as well if they would want to keep you longer um, and of course during this probation period um, you should get to know as much as you can about the company the people working there um, the objectives and the mission of the company as well because you would have to have um, basically the same trajectory as um, as the company and you have to prove that you would be a good employee or a good asset for the future. So pay very close attention to the pro probation period. And the next term is the employment offer. Uh, before you sign the contract, Um, Dana asks, is there a notice for the probation uh, period? No, no, it's not. There isn't any notice. The notice only comes in, uh, uh, becomes valid when you are a full-time employee and you're out of the probation period and now you are, um, you, you have already signed um, an indefinite period employment contract. And if they want to terminate or you want to terminate the contract with this company, you have to give a notice. Uh, but in, during the probation period, um, it's like an interim period between, um, between before becoming a full-time employee. So the employment offer, the employment offer should always be uh, written. Um, an email um, suffices, um, okay, but certain companies or companies that respect themselves and who have a very um, set, let's say, um, human resources department would offer a, a letter. Uh, you're welcome, Dana. Um, would offer, uh, would write a letter with the um, antet of the company and with um, and being signed, but. An email is also good, so uh, you have to pay attention to when you are in discussion with a certain company or when you've already sent your application to a company, that if the discussions do go a little bit more advanced um, and they do want to make you an offer, that they should send a written offer. And let's see a sentence. Ok, the sentence is trebuie să primești oferta de angajare înaintea semnării contractului and I want you to pay attention to uh, when you translate, pay attention to înaintea semnării contractului because in English, um, after the word before, 
you would need an ing form of the verb. So I'm actually very curious to see how you would translate this sentence. Um, and of course, I would want you to use a you, so um, the second person, because the sentence in Romanian is sort of like talking to someone in front of me. I'm telling someone that you, că trebuie să primești oferta de angajare înaintea semnării contractului. Therefore, when you translate it into English, you can use the same format. Okay, and um, I've mentioned a little bit earlier about the date uh, when you start your activity, when you start working with the company um, with which you've already signed a contract. Um, and we call it commencement of activity. So this is the date, the day that is already specified in the contract. So you should know, you should know when you start working with a certain company, it would be very weird not to know or to actually go there and it would not be the correct date. Um, okay, in Romanian we would say începerea activității sau data de începerea activității. So your sentence to translate is Contractul stabilește data de începere a activității. I'm also very curious to see which word in English, which verb in English you would use for stabilește. Um, for uh, commencement of activity, because we are in, uh, in Romanian, we say data de începere a activității. You can use the, the same format in English as well. Um, it's not always. Um, there are certain cases when you can um, use the same format in Romanian and in English, but you all, when you translate or when you try to write something in English, you have to always, always think of the English way of saying that thing. Um, never assume that you can translate word by word from Romanian to English and that it will sound like English. You have to make sure that you write in proper English or in the English version of your Romanian sentence or your Romanian idea. So um, often when we translate um, in our minds, um, let's say, uh, because it's not always that you uh, think in English or maybe you are not there yet, Um, you should strive actually to think in English as fast as possible because um, you would be able to work a lot, a lot faster in English um, rather than translating inside your mind from Romanian to English. And sometimes when you translate inside your mind from Romanian to English, the English that comes out is not always 100% English because then it, you know, you have to switch from one language to another and that's pretty difficult to do. Um, So, in this case, you can do that. You can use the same format. We have now a term about signing a contract, concluding a contract, which means signing the contract. Um, we've already discussed this, I think, in the first business um, live class that we've uh, done. Um, I think you can still see it um, on Facebook. Um, and it was about contracts and it were, the, um, the class was about um, terms, legal terms, of uh, contract legal terms. Um, and I think we used this one as well, which means signing a contract. And I will give you a sentence. Okay, ambele părți au semnat un contract anul trecut. So pay attention, this time you do have a time expression for the past. So pay attention to the tense that you would use. And during your employment with um, a certain company, of course, there, there are going to be changes. There are always changes, right? So you would 
um, have all these changes or every time a, um, a change uh, comes along and you have to add something to the contract, um, you would use a certain piece of paper. Um, in Romanian, it's called act adicional. In English, it's an addendum. So um, the addendum is um, just a piece of paper with only the modifications, only the changes that occur. So not the entire contract, but definitely only one or two or maybe three. I don't know how many there could be um, different changes or multiple changes. Um, and it will be attached to the contract. So whenever you refer to the contract, you have to take into consideration all the um, all these uh, pieces of paper that would make modifications because basically the first contract has different changes and those changes are part of the contract. You cannot refer to the contract without this addendum. And I'm going to give you um, a larger sentence to translate because now you've already have you already have all these um, the terms and you already have um, the necessary vocabulary, so I think you can change it. I think you can translate it and you can um, make all the necessary changes as well. Um, so the sentence is Pentru orice modificare ale clauzelor contractului vom semna un act adicional. Um, again, look at the tenses used in Romanian, so pay attention to the tenses that you use in English. Um, and for clauze ale contractului, um, which were also mentioned in the first business class. Um, but I'm going to give you a term now. And the term for clause ale contractului are provisions. Let's say provisions of the contract. So I would want you to use this, um, this term in this sentence. Now, it goes without saying that um, whatever contract you sign, even if it's an employment contract or if it's a different type of contract, you have to read it. But if we are going to refer only to employment contracts, you have to um, you have to read it all the time, even if it's standard and the, it's presented to you like this is the contract. It's a standard one, like the ones that you get from you download from the Internet, let's say, um, which you've probably already read now most of the people uh, do have an employment contract, um, but you have to read it. Um, not because you don't trust the company where that you're going to work with, but it's a contract. It binds you. You have a responsibility after you sign the contract, so you have to read it, especially, um, of course, the addendums as well. So anything that comes after that, after signing the initial contract, you have to sign everything. And if you do have a concern, you have to signal it to um, the manager or to the director of the company or to the human resources department, depending who you're dealing with for the signing of the contract. And um, last, I want to give you two more um, expressions um, and Um, for which I don't have sentences, but what you can do is you can actually create sentences with the entire expression or with only maybe one or two words from the expressions and then post, uh, send them to us. Um, and of course, I would want them to be in English. Um, and here it is. The first one, regulations in the country's labor legislation. Regulations, of course, we talk about legislația um, în vigoare și clauzele legislației în vigoare. Um, and we talk about labor legislation, deci legislația muncii. So if you can create a sentence with this one, I would also um, like it if it would be a complex sentence. Um, so we see how you uh, put these words together into English to make a complex sentence or a phrase even. And the next one I think
think this one would be easier for you to uh, create a sentence with is rate of employment, which is trata um, So I think it would be easier for you to um, to use it in a sentence or to use it in a, in a phrase, or you can also use both of them in a very short paragraph to describe maybe the um, uh, regulations in Romania, the lab, um, of the labor legislation in Romania, or to talk about the rate of employment in Romania, or to do that for UK. For those of you that do live in UK and that um, have had to find out different information about the labor legislation in UK, you can even write that. So we can also post it as a type of information, but um, I would want you to pay very close attention to vocabulary and to grammar when you write it. So um, we see how you create these sentences and how you um, make a very, very short summary of the information that you have. Um, so when you post anything as comments, um, as comments to our live class, um, we will not take into consideration the validity of that information. Um, but we will talk on, we will talk only about the vocabulary, about language, about tenses, so grammar as well, punctuation, spelling. Okay, so don't worry about um, giving false information or not. And I would also want anybody that do, that um, watches us or that would uh, come later to the comments and would want to see um, the comments and the sentences. Do not. Um, comment or do not mention the validity of the information because this is um, mostly a vocabulary class. So we would talk about grammar and um, language and of course your sentences would have to be English sentences. So it would have to make sense and be <laughs> correct from uh, the English language point of view. So these are all the, um, um, the information that we have today. Um, I hope it was useful and I really hope that you will pay very close attention to when you have to uh, sign a labor contract um, and that you will not um, forget that you as employees have rights and you have to know your rights. So you would better do know the uh, labor legislation in any of the countries where you work. So thank you very much. Um, thank you, Dana, for her comments. And I am waiting after the class and after we stop the live class, um, I'm waiting to see um, your translations and to see how you write in English. Thank you. Bye.